The 1541 Ultimate series of cartridges designed and produced by Gideon Logic Architectures revolutionised the Commodore computer scene for enthusiasts by providing a highly adaptable storage solution. Now more commonly referred to as just the Ultimate, this clever cart implements a real 1541 disk drive, providing the ability to load floppy disk images via a USB stick and provides myriad other features such as emulating several fast load and freeze cartridges. When Gideon announced last year that he was working on the Ultimate 64, an all-in-one solution providing hardware implementation of the entire Commodore 64 system, us enthusiasts couldn't wait for the product to be ready and eagerly placed our pre-orders when they became available. The following list is just a quick glance at some of the Ultimate 64's feature set and highlights the product's overall versatility. Looking at the Ultimate 64 board itself, starting from the right side, we can see two controller ports that allow you to use your favourite 9-pin joystick to play games, a multi-button which is used to power the Ultimate 64 on and off, access the menu, reset the machine and start up the freeze functionality when used in conjunction with the restore key. And finally we find a power port for you to plug in the supply 12V DC power supply. Around the back you will find a shielded cartridge port. Then we have a serial and AV sockets, followed up by a cassette port. And where you would find a user port on a real C64, the Ultimate 64 features HDMI, Ethernet and two USB connections. On the left side of the board, you will notice a button battery cell used to power the board's internal clock, an internal USB port and a Wi-Fi module. The Wi-Fi module is not enabled at the time of making this video, but the intention is to enable its functionality soon via a firmware update. The FPGA is situated just off centre on the board. The Ultimate 64 also contains a couple of empty SID sockets that can accommodate both 6581s and 8580 SIDs. As we continue to head back to the right side at the front of the board, we come across the user port header. And here we have a 3 pin LED header. When connecting the C64's LED power cable to this, you have the option to use it as either a power indicator or an activity indicator, depending on which two pins you decide to connect. It is possible to show both indicators using a modified dual LED cable. Finally, we complete the round trip with the keyboard connectors, situated right behind the controller ports. I am installing my Ultimate 64 in an original bread bin case and as you can see, it fits and sits in perfectly. If you are installing the Ultimate 64 in a C64C case, then you may find that you will need to install keyboard mounts to securely hold the keyboard in place. And this is how everything looks when all the components are fixed together. I have connected the Ultimate 64 to a TV via HDMI output. The Ultimate 64's HDMI output resolution is 720 by 576 at 50 Hz for PAL. Upon booting up the Ultimate 64 for the first time, you will get a message informing you that you will need to install ROMs before you are able to use the machine. So to do this, you can go onto a computer and Google C64 system file ROMs. Go onto the first link that you find listed from which you can download the basic kernel and character ROMs onto your computer. Copy these files across to the USB stick that you'll be using to load disk images from. Note that you may need to rename the extension of the three files to .rom. Once that is done, plug the USB stick into the Ultimate 64 and power it up. When you get the message again, short press the multi button to bring up the following menu and navigate into the folder that contains the three ROMs. Select the basic ROM and choose 
the flash as original basic ROM option. Proceed to do this for the other two ROMs and then you're ready to go. Now let's take a look at how we load disk images on the Ultimate 64. we have success. Now, let's try loading up a CRT image. No problem at all. The Ultimate 64 has inbuilt tape support, so let's give this function a try as well. As the Ultimate 64 has a cartridge port, let's see how it goes loading up the Sam's Journey cartridge. The Ultimate 64 has a wide range of settings at its disposal for you to play around with. Let's have a quick look through the settings and some of its available options. In addition to being able to output the Ultimate 64 to HDMI, you have the choice to do audio visual output via an analog signal. The Ultimate 64 is a fantastic all-in-one C64 device, but I appreciate that it's not for everyone. Though it provides a very high level of compatibility, it's never going to be 100% like real hardware. The restricted accessibility of the user port may be too much of a burden for some, and then there is the cost of the board. But for myself, this is the perfect solution for my C64 needs. It plays the software images I need, it cuts down on the desk space required, 
has the flexibility to work on current LCD TVs while at the same time supporting my Commodore monitor. And most importantly, it ensures that I have access to C64 gaming under a more reliable infrastructure that will long last into the future. In short, I love it.